We are finally at the very, very, very end of the single life season four. This is the very, very last part to the tell all part five. Was this episode necessary? Absolutely not. Was I entertained? Absolutely. So let's just get into it. We're obsessed with TLC and all the trashy reality TV. It's It's a a recap. recap. It's a recap. It's a recap. Did anyone think it was pretty funny how Natalie was uh, talking about how Louisa seemed a bit desperate and awkward professing her love for Tim? For me, it was like awkward. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, I'm, I'm into you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so into you. And I'm like, Jamal and Louisa leave the tell-all together and talk about getting drunk and perhaps sleeping together. I don't know. This conversation was really weird in the sense that it seemed like we weren't supposed to hear it. I'm going to sleep. You're going to sleep? Are you going to sleep with me? Can I? Yeah. Chantel got out of her bejeweled jumpsuit and then she was in sweats and she was teaching the ladies how to twerk. And Veronica twerking is exactly what I look like when I try to twerk. Three, four, left one. Oh, which way are we? Oh, four, right one, two, three, four, and pump, 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 pump. Then Miss Debbie wants to learn how to twerk, and I'm sorry, Miss Debbie, weren't you just slut shaming her a few episodes ago? So why are you trying to twerk? One, yes, Miss Debbie, yes. Go right here. Now it's time for everybody to go back on stage, and Sean asks a very important question. Who would you date in the 90-day universe? Tim says, well, Chantel's gorgeous, Natalie's beautiful, and Paula, she's a wrestler, so I like that. Veronica picks Andre, which is quite interesting. Chantel picks Alexi and Julian. Yeah, Miss Debbie's son. Oh my god, Chantel really cannot pick men. Her picker is so off. And Miss Debbie's hearing this and she's like, oh, uh, okay, well, Chantel's a a princess type and Julian likes princesses. I can make this happen, Chantel. What? What the fork is going on? Because Miss Debbie spent the first two parts of the tell-all calling Chantel basically a whore. Tyree, Tyree, Tyree. Oh my god, you guys. Guess who he picks. Just guess. I'll give you a second to guess. He picks Larissa. Yeah, the one with a basketball for each boob. Do you even know what her personality is like? Her personality sucks. I can guarantee you that Tyree is most definitely subscribed to her OnlyFans. And by the way, I did see a video of hers and um, it's not that great. Okay, well, since I'm also a part of the 90 Day Universe, I would also like to answer this question. And my answer would be Kobe. Of course, it's Kobe. I love Kobe. Well, it's Natalie's turn to get roasted again. Caesar, for some reason, and OG Debbie come back on stage. And so does Big Mike. They replay the scene of Natalie asking Mike to be her baby daddy and it's so cringy. It's so cringy. I can't even watch it again. And the fact that everybody else on the stage has to watch it with her. Oh my God, I would have died. I would have just simply died. Mike says he was absolutely shook to hear that from her. Like, why would she even expect this considering they're not even together anymore? And he was like, does she think I'm just gonna donate my sperm? Okay, why did that sound like Gino? whatever. And then Josh says this makes him feel insecure and scared for himself that this could happen to him and how Natalie doesn't know what she wants. She's all over the place and she needs to really figure out what she wants. I felt like it was a convenient excuse, but I totally do think it's also valid. Like I do think Josh does like Natalie, but he does not let it get any further than just a crush, a fling, because she's so like crazy. Then Sean asks Tyree what he thinks of this. And no offense, why does his opinion matter? Also, I see some of y'all in the comments saying Natalie should have stayed with Mike. She shouldn't have divorced him. Uh, absolutely not. Did you guys forget how awful and miserable they were together? And don't forget Trish. She was the fucking worst. His mother. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I would never deal with her as my mother-in-law. 
no thank you. Mike reveals that he's moved on and he's in a very serious relationship and they've been seeing each other for a year and he loves his girlfriend and he has officially started the divorce papers and he leans back and he tells his little minions go get them papers and Debbie's like okay I'm gonna get the papers for Mike <laughs> and Natalie's like oh, wow I can't believe this he came to divorce me and Debbie gives her the manila envelope and serves her the divorce papers. Now, I didn't know this, but apparently Mike can't be the one to hand her the divorce papers legally. I don't know why that's a thing. Does anybody know why? If you know, let me know down in the comments. So yeah, that's why he had Debbie do it. Natalie opens the envelope and she looks over the paperwork and she's like, fine, I'm going to sign it now. And everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Don't sign it now. Take a minute, Natalie. I'm going to do it now. No, 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 Natalie. Don't just take a breather. Take a minute. Even Mike is like, Natalie, you have 90 days. Just like relax. And she's like, why, why, why should I wait? I'm just going to sign it now. I'm just going to sign it and get this divorce. And then Veronica tells her, if you sign it now, it's going to be void because it needs to be notarized. Josh is like, don't do it. Mike is like, don't do it. Everybody tells her, do not sign it now. And she's like, I'm just going to sign it. Should I not sign it? Should I sign it? Should I not? What should I do? Oh my God. <laughs> I can see why Josh doesn't want to get too close to her. Okay. <laughs> Natalie's breaking down. She's crying. She's sobbing. OG Debbie now feels bad because her friend Natalie is hyperventilating and having a meltdown. And she's like, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. Miss Osama Debbie's very upset that they would do this on stage in front of the cameras. And I mean, I did kind of agree, but it made for great TV. And Miss Osama Debbie just kind of went too far with it. You shouldn't have done this on national TV, man. That was a low blow. I mean, look at her. She's a mess. Mike and Tim tried to tell Miss Debbie that he's wanted a divorce for a while. He even brought it up last year, but Natalie refused. So it's been a long time coming, which, okay, I definitely get why he had to do it this way. And Natalie wants to make sure this won't affect her mom. So Mike is like, no, no, it has nothing to do with your mom. She's fine. Then Miss Debbie goes hard, okay? She goes in hard defending Natalie, which I did appreciate for Natalie's sake. But at the same time, she just kept dragging it on and on. But it was so funny because as Miss Debbie was defending Natalie, she was also unintentionally dragging her too. Because <laughs> she was like, she's been traumatized. Look at her. Does she look like she's in the right state of mind? She was just humiliated by the guy she slept with last night that used her up and called her a charity case. And now she's humiliated by her ex-husband who also doesn't want her. <laughs> OG Debbie's trying to defend herself because Miss Debbie is attacking her and Mike. And she goes, and Natalie knows I care about her. She's my dear friend. And it's better coming from me, you know, her friend than from a stranger. And Natalie's like, I don't want this divorce. Oh my God, let it go, girl. Move on. Jeez. Mike's even saying to her and everybody on stage that he sees a future with his current girlfriend and hopes to start a family with her. And Natalie loses it. She just... Oh my God, that is everything she ever wanted. And now he is going to do it with someone else. I think she needs to close this chapter, let it go. You know, there was a reason why you guys broke up. There's a reason why you left him. There's a reason why you went to LA. And now she's just missing it because things aren't working out with her and Josh. And she's almost 40 and she doesn't have kids. And she really, really wants kids and blah, blah, blah. So I feel like she's just missing you know how like after you break up with somebody and at the time you broke up with them, you had so many reasons like you couldn't stand this person, but then you're kind of lonely and then you start to miss that person because you remember all the good stuff and you're also having like a different kind of memory where you just feel like things were better than they actually were. I feel like that's what Natalie's doing. Mike is like, well, Josh, you know, after she signs a divorce paper, she's all yours. And Josh is like, I, I, I just, I, what? <laughs> I feel like her being married to Mike was the, the best excuse that Josh could have had to use. And now he needs something else. Every time somebody asks Josh what his status with Natalie is, he gives such indirect, bullshit, vague answers. And it drives me crazy. 
I don't want to see Natalie and Josh come back next season. I'll take Natalie dating different men, but no more Josh and no more Mike. Like, I can't do this anymore. So the tell-all ends. And that's a wrap. Season four of The Single Life is over. We're done. Next week, uh, let me see my calendar. We have Love in Paradise coming up. There's some major, major tea about one of the cast members and I'll let you guys in on it next week. So until then, let me know all your thoughts about this season of The Single Life and this episode and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye. It's a recap. It's a recap.